Okay, gang, this one is applying the zero product property to solve equations. This is module 7, 3 in our IM2 class. So our question is, how do we use the zero product property to solve equations? Okay, so it works like this. Um, uh, if you have, so zero product property states that if the product of two or more things equals zero, then either one of them or both of them must equal zero, or all three of them or all four of them must equal zero. So... If we have uh, something times something times something equals zero, then remember, anything times zero equals zero. So either this something equals zero and or this one equals zero and or this one equals zero. Okay, so find the zeros. Here we go. So when it says find the zeros, that just means it equals zero. So we set each of these factors equal to zero. So x minus 15 equals 0, or x plus 7 equals 0. So here I'm going to go plus 15, plus 15. Here I'll go minus 7, minus 7. So when we do that, uh, we get x equals 15, or x equals negative 7. And those are our zeros. Some textbooks like to call them solutions. Some textbooks like to call them the x-intercepts. Some textbooks like to call them the roots. But uh, this book likes to say zeros. Okay, so here's another one. So here we set these uh, factors equal to zero. So here I'm going to do minus one, minus one. Here we'll do plus 23, plus 23. So there we go. And then uh, we got to do one more step here. Divide by two, divide by two. So when we divide by two, we get negative one-half. Okay. So our zeros are negative one-half or positive 23, okay? All right, here's the next one. Hi. Uh, let's see. This pass is for... Uh, she is not here, honey. Okay. So here, uh, there's three factors, you guys. 7 equals 0, or x minus 13 equals 0, or x plus 12 equals 0. Okay, well, 7 doesn't equal 0, so you can get disregard that one right there. And then on this one, we add 13. On this one, we subtract 12. So we get our only two zeros on this one are, are 13 and negative 12. Okay, easy, right? Okay, here's another one. So here we have three factors. 2x uh, is a factor, 2x plus 3 is 1, and then 3x minus 5 is also. So we set all of those equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to do these one at a time. So this one I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, 0 divided by anything is 0. Okay, so this one we get 1, 0 is x equals 0. This one here, we're going to go minus 3, minus 3, okay? And then we got to, um, now we got to divide by 2, so we get uh, negative 3 halves. Okay, here we're going to go plus 5, plus 5, so when we add 5 to both sides, then we got to divide by 3, so we get 5 thirds. So our zeros are all three of those, x equals 0 or negative 3 halves or positive 5 thirds. Okay, so this one here, my students kind of struggled on this, um, uh, and they're all sitting here watching. So solve using the distributive property along with the zero product property. Okay, so here we go. All right, so it's kind of hard to see, you guys, and and um, uh, and I can see why. So what happens here, you guys, is these guys both have the same binomial factor, x minus 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull the x minus 4 out of both of them. And when I pull the x minus 4 out, it becomes as 1x minus 4. Okay, some students said, shouldn't it be x minus 4 squared? Another one said, shouldn't it be 2 times x minus 4? It's just one of them. And what we're doing is we're pulling it out of both of them. So these two guys come out as 1, and we're left with the stuff that tags along with it. This one has a 3x. This one has a plus 5. Okay, we'll do a lot more of this in Module 8, you guys. This is actually called factoring by grouping, and we'll get to that in Module 8. It's a really strong factoring unit. Anyway, so when there's the same binomial factors, it comes out as one of them, and then you uh, put the other stuff with it in the other parentheses, okay? All right, then we set each one of those factors equal to zero, okay? So we're going to go minus five. Whoops, I lost a page there. Minus five on both of those, and then add four on both of those, and then so now we got to divide by three, and so we get uh, negative five-thirds or four. Let's try one more of those, you guys, okay? Here, they both have the x plus 2s. So if we pull the x plus 2s out with just one of them, they come out as just one x plus 2. We're left with the stuff that tags along with it, so the negative 9 plus 3x. Another student asked, can we write that as 3x minus 9? You bet.
Okay, and then set those equal to zero. So when you set them equal to zero, then we solve, um, and you get uh, three on that one, and then negative two is that one. Okay, all right, if you are in my class, that will be your assignment. And we did discover on this guy right here, this is in time right here, you guys. So thank you, Grace. Uh, that one um, we can disregard because you're talking about seconds and you can't have a negative one half of a second. So it's only a positive five halves of a second. All right, you guys, take care. Okay.